with meeting to order at 504 yeah see we uh, monthly uh, library board um, meeting uh, in attendance tonight will be Laura Ingham Don Wright Eileen Scherer yet. oh no not Laura Ingham excuse me she's absent Don Wright DA Hildebrand Eileen Sheridan Janet Wallander our newest member Scott Edwards and myself Dan Millard and uh -oh. oh shoot I didn't unlock the door this would be see Laura was just outside the window so you were <laughs> <actually> <laughs> <right>. you were <laughs> right that's what I forgot to do the door locks automatically at five Click. and I forgot to unlock it so we'll this is perfect wait Laura and there she is I doubt that anybody else is going to attend, so I'm not going to worry about unlocking the door. Yeah. So sorry about that. It's all right. All right. All right. Moving forward. Set it here. And so um, I would just ask the members of the board that as we move forward, you know, Scott is, um, we've had an orientation, but. You know, this is all kind of new and everything else. So if we could just kind of do a little bit more explanation as we go through this first time. And if um, Scott, feel free to ask questions at any point along the way. Um, Did you talk about the mandatory arm wrestling? <laughs> no, I, I was going to leave that part up to you. <laughs> yeah. Where's your present oh, gorilla? <laughs> oh, yeah. And how the newest member gets to be vice chair. Yeah, I yeah. 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 didn't see it. Didn't it. All right. So, moving forward Thanks. to approval of the, the minutes. I move they be approved as presented. I motion. second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Most carries. And so that's another thing we do. We could vote using like that technology, but we find it a lot easier just to use voice technology. Okay. okay. And it's all being basically, recorded, basically, so yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. We're, we're being video we are being recorded, recorded right. video recorded. So. so if you ever want to watch yourself on TV, so you too could watch this fascinating <laughs> meeting again. <laughs> all right, moving forward. Public comments. Do we have public comments? Going once, going no twice. public. No public, so no comments. And, and the foundation was um, uh, skipped the Dece end of December meeting, so there's nothing new to add really there. Okay. Just working hard and hardly working? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, they're working hard, yeah. Oh, I know they're working hard. <laughs> All right. Library director. Great. So um, would the board like to add the item of selecting a vice chair? Yes, we would. All right. I would make that motion that we amend today's agenda to select a vice chair of the Oregon City Library Board. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Oh. So, who do you want to nominate for vice chair? Well, you know, the easiest way to get Scott up to speed is to nominate him. <laughs> That's what I said. So, Scott, understand this. I was vice chair last year. The reason why I was vice chair last year is because I missed the meeting that they voted in the <laughs> vice chair the previous year. So the only comment so I would make there is, are there some other people who have been on the board who would probably rotate into the chair position if they were vice chair, and would they be interested in that? I mean, I think that would be you two. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been chair, you've been chair, you've been chair. Mm -hmm. DA, you've been chair? No, but I... <laughs> You know, I'm I'm always squeamish about that sort of thing. I would know. Does vice chair always rotate roll roll in? Oh, that's okay. That's the assumption. Yeah, that's kind of the assumption. That's the easiest. I mean, that's not like written anywhere mm -hmm. that I know of. But yeah, and the I vice would, chair rarely has to do anything. I would nominate Eileen just mm -hmm. because, in terms of, I think it's fair to sort of do longevity. Longevity. I mean, if you're interested, I would. Yeah, I would be interested. Right. You have that motion. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, then I'll second that as a motion. We have a second. Mm -hmm. All of the nominations cease, and we cast an unanimous ballot for Eileen Sheridan. Does <laughs> that call for second. a second? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an actual motion. Okay. Robert's Rules of Order, man. And he's second. got the book on him, so. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank Congratulations you. to Eileen. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. 
And now we can have Michelle add that to the website as well. Okay, library director's report. Let's see here. Now the fun begins. Um, so, you know, if people would like me to keep different statistics, just feel free. And maybe there will be suggestions for the new library that feel appropriate as far as statistics keeping. But at the, at the time, we're doing door count, which is like virtually the same as this time last year. So that's pretty nice. Um, fines and fees are up. Not a lot, but up. Checkout is still down, but I think you'll remember last month, it was like only 85% of this time last year. So we're back in that more normal range. Mm -hmm. um, is that self-checkout? No, that's everything. Everything. Yeah, that's everything. So what do you think is causing the self-checkout to go down? The self-checkout? Well, this is not self-checkout. This is all checkout. So all checkouts mm -hmm. are down in materials. So it's like we have the same number of people visiting the library, but those people are checking out fewer items. Okay. So I think people are getting more things online. And I, you know, there's an awful lot of sources for ebooks besides the library. Mm -hmm. And even though our ebook numbers are creeping up, probably hopefully because we added 3M, which is a better ebook vendor. Um, you know, maybe that accounts for it. It's interesting to think that there's just as many people coming in, but they're not as interested in the materials. It's what we thought would happen, right? Yeah. I'm so thrilled there's still as many yeah. people coming in. So the checkout number, it's a quantity and yeah. not the number of cards being swiped. It's not the... It's the, the number of items. It's items. the actual number okay. of items. Okay. So, okay. yeah, when you actually look at this, this okay. list, um it is the you know like direct loans to the public so adults is 21,000 over okay. 21,000 and the kids are 10,000 so last year the kids were a thousand more than this year you know I don't know a couple of days can make a huge difference and um I don't know you just never know Christmas break can be a little bit different from year to year. It can make a huge difference. So, so but ebooks wouldn't um, or wouldn't affect either of these because it doesn't count no, as a e checkout or well, uh, ebooks are factored into these. They're but well, they wouldn't consider a door counter a checkout. Would appear in either of those. No, that door that well. So ebooks could be completely online and not be involved with the people doing the door the door at all. Right. So people who check out ebooks, we have absolutely no way of knowing if they're also the people who come in the door. There's no relationship, right? So we just don't know. Um, as far as checkouts, what I usually, th these figures on this are separate. The ebooks from the other mm -hmm. items that come out of the library, they're separate so that we can see them separately. But I also, what I usually do is add them in so that I can say, so this year compared to last year ebooks are up so this is how it changes or doesn't change our percentage of things being checked out just overall for the overall picture yeah so those numbers are going up a little bit in fact it's almost 200 more ebooks this year for the month than last year for the month of december which is not insubstantial i mean 200 is quite a bit but as far as yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to think about. You don't have to come in the door to get right. your ebooks. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's and I may have a misassumption that people who are doing that are not probably going to come in, so they're not going to affect the door count. But that could be. It. Who knows exactly? But it is curious that door count is staying high, but checkout is. Right. It is curious. At the risk of sounding like a Snoopy government agency, do you break down like what kind of materials are checked out, like? Uh, video games, uh, movies. Uh, I don't, but I could. Uh, I was wondering if, if if people are shifting from print media into more of that kind of stuff, which has well, always been there. But yeah, well, we know that DVDs are, for instance, a huge portion of what we check out. Right. You know, and and our when we moved into the Carnegie, 
we brought the entire DVD collection with us, so it was just naturally more robust than our book collection. Right. You know, more to browse. But, it, well, of course, except that a lot of it's always gone. Yeah. Because it's checked out a lot. I know a lot of people are into gaming. Even people, yeah, and and we age, and we but, have a lot of games. Yeah, more a lot more than some of the other libraries, don't we? Some libraries still refuse to carry games. Really, and we're not one of those libraries. Yeah. Well, I think it'd be interesting to see kind of a breakdown of how how deep can you go in your breakdown. It has to do something with your uh, repopulating your shelves. To how much stuff is. If no fiction is ever checked out, then you're probably not going to buy a lot more fiction, right? Something like that? Well, you know, so there, you will, but you may not buy as much. So there's always that argument of like, give them what they want versus give them what they need, right? Hmm. So in a public library, we lean more towards give them what they want because we're a public library. We're, yeah. But we still, you know, if there's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people who read award winners and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's some stuff that's pretty esoteric that you go, well, that's a local author. Or I think that book is really important and we're still going to get it. Will we get 10 copies of it? No. no. You know. Right. But at the same time, you've got to counterbalance that with things like David Bowie's new album that just came out and here he has died. And you've only got oh. two in the system. You had and you to bring up David Bowie, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Um... But, but a good analysis of that would be interesting for you guys to see. And breakdown um, of you know, yeah. movies, uh, albums, uh, what are the, the not talkaways? What are those things called? Walk away. Walk away. Yeah, they do that too. Walk, walkabouts. <laughs> well, it's the the self-contained ones that all you got to do is plug in. Yeah, the playaways. Playaways. That's playaways. Yeah. Well, I, the only reason I bring this up is I'm thinking of the new building, which has. A lot more shelf space than we have now, but it's also infinite. I mean, it's finite. Uh, so I was wondering if that might help if we have to ever make a decision about. Oh yeah, and we will. Uh -huh. And we will. We probably won't have to do that until um, September. You but know it's, when? But it's this year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tons of time. Looking forward. Looking forward. That's what I'm saying. And our, you know, Linda is our basically our main person who's oversees collection development. That's why I'm kind so. of lobbying the question, kind of in between you two. So. <laughs> Very good, Don. Very good. So, um, yeah. So statistics are really very, very interesting. Um, our events in December were the film series. It, it just constantly brings in about thirty to thirty-five people every month. The people who go to the films are very loyal. <laughs> And it's like the same group every month with a few variations. And there are people that some of them I never see in the library, which is awesome. So I like knowing that we have events that people who don't necessarily use a traditional library will go to. You know, I really like that idea. Um, and so there's the breakdown of all the, the events. now. We have um, somebody who just retired out of the children's area, and she was doing crafts and story times when pressed into service. And our new person is starting at the end of January. And so we're kind of like not mixing it up very much until the new person comes. And we're just gonna let her observe and redo whatever she wants whatever she thinks we need so we have story times four times a week yes plus a family story time once a month um yeah plus a spanish story time no this yes well spanish is one week a month one of those days so yeah there's story time monday through thursday every week okay every week so um yeah and so She's actually the chair of the Children's Services Division for Oregon Library Association. So, um, so she's like right in the thick of the best training and what's going on. And we'll have her, um, maybe we could bring her in February and have her meet the board. That would be fun. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. We'll bring her in. So we are going to keep her very, very busy. Um, and then here's the list of all the upcoming. So 
some of these have already happened. Um, we just had our film for this month, which was about the same 35 people that came. Cyber Seniors, it was really good. It was really, really good. It was about matching up teens and seniors at like a retirement home to work on technology. And then they ended up, I mean, this is a documentary, you know, and then they ended up having a YouTube contest on who could post the best like um, educational YouTube movie. It was pretty hysterical. Yeah, it was pretty hysterical. So the person who won it, oh, I shouldn't give it away. Anyway, one of the really funny videos was like how to make a grilled cheese sandwich and, and well, how to make lunch. And this gal put corn in the cob in like one of those tea pots that you plug into the wall. Yeah. It like works perfectly. Yeah. And she made grilled cheese sandwiches using her iron. <laughs> Urban yeah. hack, man. I love it. It was great. <laughs> it was really, really funny. Anyway, we have a good time out at those. And the, um, the Pioneer Community Center still provides like all the food for that and um, the theater out at the end of the Oregon Trail is fabulous and the friends we need to get them um, an accounting of like all the films and they'll help pay for all the films Great. So, yeah so that's my let's see here report on just simple operations something else I was going to tell you about but let's, um, if there are no questions, no more questions. We can go on to the building report. Yeah, and let's see if these will come up. Yep. I should have loaded this differently. Why? Uh oh, because, let's see here, view attachment. Because I want to show, I want to show it. Go up on the screen here. Yeah, but I don't know if that's going to work. We got it here. <clears throat> We're all clicking at different rates, but. Uh, our, 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 let's see here. I think this would work. which computer it is. I see a light in the lens up there. Oh, good. Don't know what that portends, but... Uh-oh, here comes help. <laughs> is it this one? Dias one? Or is yeah, it Testify? It's what? Yeah. plugged in it's too. Too. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it might not work right away. I knew there was something I meant to do before I started the meeting. Oops. I just broke it. Yep. Logging off, shutting down. What? Cool. Technology push bites us. You push the button by accident? Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to shut down though. Well, so anyway, we could start talking about other things. Um, Speed, the speed on some of the things that we're doing towards getting ready for the new library. So today, for instance, um, we had our first transition team meeting, and it's just like four of us that are getting together to make sure that we're thinking about all the things that need to be done in order to make sure everything. So we're getting there. Ah. <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, 
ready for the new library. So, for instance, um, you know, um, Linda and I have been heavily involved in the planning process, but and we've tried to communicate a lot of that to the staff. But um, Michelle, for instance, will have to. She's my our IT person. At, she's like an IT liaison. She doesn't really, well, she doesn't code for us or anything like that. But um, she makes sure everything is working. So she needs to be like really heavily involved in the technology aspect of it. So even though we have, you know, like a huge AV contract with somebody that's figured out every little thing, like Michelle also needs to know it, for instance, to be sure that, you know, everything is, um, every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Because, like right now, a lot of things are like parceled out to the right people, but we're the people that have to make sure everything comes together and is integrated together. So that's what this transition team is trying to make sure happens. So like our project manager, for instance, will help with make sure that we hire a moving company. But then it's staff that has to kind of like make sure that they work with the moving company. So we can't, you know, this is, we're trying to gear everybody up and make sure everybody kind of knows what's coming down the pike, what's going to happen, what their role in it is, and it will be multiple. They'll be doing multiple things, right? And then in the background, you know, we're trying to do RFID, we're trying to come up on the acquisitions module, we're trying to think about pre-processing, we're trying to get credit cards going, we're trying to do all these things that hopefully will be started um, when we get into the new library. So we don't want them to be brand new, but some of them, like, we can't do until we're there, yeah. you know? So it gets very, very complicated because we have lots of different things going on at the same time. And that's what the transition team is trying to do is, I have to start this all over again. Um, at any rate, that's what we are doing today. Um, so RFID, that's a process that we'll be working with the county on. So Scott, just so you understand, I, I may have mentioned this to you. Um, when we formed the library district, the county promised that they would support that library district forever. Not just in collecting the money and distributing it, but making sure that the libraries could function. It was a historical activity that they did was supply the um, software and people to help with the software and the um, the courier system and all that. So they agreed that whatever we were doing um, activities we were doing in 2008 when the library district was formed, they would continue to do those activities. That is not money that comes out of the library district funds. That, those are dollars that come out of the county general fund. And so we've been fortunate enough in the last couple of years um, we've gone through a couple different managers of that office we call that office network that's just what it gets called okay. and um oh, here we are and we've been fortunate in that um the greg williams who is the network director right now he's a librarian and came from west lynn so he knows what it's like to be on this side of network and he knows how to like really um, help us out a lot so we're hoping to centralize like more and more stuff because they can do things more efficiently once out of network than we can do 11 times out of our libraries you know what I mean so we're working towards centralizing what we can and so like for instance this last year we had our first um, centralized training that we've had in a really long time for like every single person who works for all of the libraries in Clackamas County get together and that was fantastic but RFID which is the radio frequency ID that Multnomah County has and all that with automated materials handler and the self checks that's something that should needs to come out of their office because we all need to be on the same system we cannot do that in this and be on different systems it just would be ludicrous so we had a big training about that and um, there we go, view attachment. There we go. 
Now, can you see the screen, or are you still seeing? Do I have to flip to? Because I think you have to flip the switch. That is, Laura, where is that? On the left hand side, it, there it is. Okay. It's right where that white yeah, tag is, mm -hmm. where it says packet presentation. Yeah. yeah. And now you're running our screens. Yeah, you're in yeah, charge. Yeah, except it's. You're in charge. In charge. Yeah, but yeah. this is weird because it's You'll not see. like. Yeah, this, wait, 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 wait. This is kind of weird because it's not um, the run, the PowerPoint. It's just kind of go through the slides. So these are the PowerPoints that I present to the um, city commission when I meet with them twice a month so that we can kind of have a little chat about what's going on in the building. And this kind of gives us a really nice visual. And I don't have DA with me, so I have to, you know, I can't rely on DA. Right. So, um, Scott, DA attends the building committees meetings that are once a week yeah. up at the trailer. And then he's also on the foundation board, which Pam is on. Okay. And yeah. so DA is like this really valuable person who likes, has the bigger picture well, besides just me, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's really helpful. Not to mention extensive experience with this sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And not besides to mention, yeah. Being a contractor. Yeah. Yeah. This is that little sample wall that they're building, and I still think it's not yet complete, right, DA? No, it's not complete yet. Yeah, fact, it's kind of, I know it's kind of. Tell funny. me about the sample wall. It's so the architects can see how everything looks all together. Oh, this is pretty typical on 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 projects where you have a lot of architectural detailing. Yeah, they you do a mock-up wall to uh, make sure that all of the the various components come together properly. So right now. You're just looking at concrete block, but they'll be laying up the the uh, uh, brick on that, and they'll get a piece of precast concrete that'll, that'll go in that that forms the window system. Okay. Um, and then they're going to look at it and go, "Oh, well, we forgot a sealant joint right there." You know that kind of, uh, that, so kind of that kind of stuff. And then the architect can look at it and say, "Well, those two colors don't look very good together." So I thought this was yeah. the utility wall that we talked about. You know, that little. Where the utilities are going to be, you know, some kind of little. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, that shows what I know. So this, these are the older pictures from the beginning of January. They've come a long way, but this just kind of shows you the process. This was, um, that's the elevator tower, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the shaft. Mm -hmm. That's the shaft. Yeah. Yeah, shaft. And then this was early on when um, we were just making the openings. Um, so these that don't look that much different, but that's the main access from the old library into the new library. You got to give the old building credit for holding up to this. Oh yeah. Well, okay. we got to give the old library credit for a lot. I yeah. mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful building. It's going to look even better. This is when there was no roof or no second floor, so you could still, there was still lots of light on the inside. This is looking towards 7th Street, and those braces that you see on the sides, right, along here mm -hmm. and stuff, so those are required by OSHA, and those still are there, but they will be coming up very soon. And so this little scissor lift over here in the corner, I mean, these guys had to get into these really tiny spaces and go up and down. It was crazy watching them. Yay, that was great foresight to get the steel going before this all happened. That, that, that was really important for yeah. us to get that because uh, where we are today is, is we're really we're on schedule to open in right. September. Yeah. And it wouldn't have happened if we, if we had not been able to get the early steel. Well, I, I give you yeah. creds for that because you know, push that forward. That was great. That happens to be our construction site manager down there. That's Dave. And then Dave gave us a tour. The, the, a lot has changed, but we took the staff out for on a staff meeting day and took a little tour. So there's that one. And then let's see if I can get this one open. And then this was, oh man, maybe I got them in the wrong order. order. Yeah. No, I think you're right, yeah, you're right. right. Are they? Yeah, I liked them earlier. Mm -hmm. 
And then the final one has. Oh yeah, I didn't. I've changed. I forgot to change the date on page one. That's right. So this was the start of them putting decking on the second floor. So you can, you know, when we first went in there, and the this up here is the roof, and then this is the second floor. But it looked so high. And from the interior, you know, it's just a view that you guys can't have. It's really fun. Okay, that's the end of that one. And then I think this one might be a little longer. Oops, there we go. Okay, so this is the most recent one. But we've been, we went back yesterday, so it's even. So now the second floor decking is completely on. And we're looking towards the children's room towards 7th. And then we're, I'm standing in the open foyer. That's going to be the open foyer there. Now that's the actual height of the children's area there? Well, no, it won't come down. It won't be quite that high. It will come down to about uh, 12 and a half feet. Yeah, there's a drop ceiling in there's there. There's a drop ceiling okay, in there. Okay, get all of our feet. utilities through. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was just thinking about Woggy. Man, he's going to have a big thing to fill there. <laughs> yeah. That's looking towards um, Jefferson from the open foyer to the back wall. Mm -hmm. That's looking towards the community room from the foyer. And there's the elevator. You can see the elevator door opening there, okay. where it will be. And then that's further into the community room. So you can see those openings where there will be windows. So it really, once it got the second floor decking on it, it really took a different shape. Mm -hmm. And then this is up on top of the second floor decking now. Since then, they've poured concrete and the slab is on is on um, but we there a couple of us were able to go up last week and yesterday no I mean, this was oh. last week to yesterday as well this was before they poured the concrete down. this is like way off the topic but what's that little box on top of the old Carnegie on the stilt? That has to do with the HVAC doesn't it DA well I think the one to, I don't know what the one to the right is that's what here. I'm talking about yeah but it's sitting up on a Oh, that's a light. That's a light for the night. Oh, oh temporary yeah, light. yeah, yeah. That, that's right. that illuminates this. this space that's right. At night. Temporary okay. light. Yeah. So you can see how well you can see the roof of the Carnegie. So that's going to be cleaned up quite a bit because that same equipment will not be needed. But the idea of the um, the artist that we have um, will be retaining to do a sculpture that will hang in the foyer. They that same artist will also be producing. Uh, pattern for the frit, which is the design that goes on the outside of the glass as it goes around the foyer only, just that upper second story glass. And that will help um, keep us from seeing the roof of the Carnegie, but still let in light. So that's what the Public Art Committee is working on with the artist. We're, we need to get the, that done earliest, mm -hmm. and so that the glass production can be done. Might add uh, that our, I'm really impressed with the artist that we've selected for that. He knows uh, construction. He knows how to do this stuff. And yeah, yeah he's. Are you, yeah. When are you announcing who it is? Well, we don't have a contract with him, but his um, yet okay. still working on that. Um, note to self: stay on top of that. Um, his name is John Rogers. Okay. Yeah. Is he local or? He's local. We did like kind of a regional search mm -hmm. yeah. and we just kind of got lucky that we got a local person yeah. so that we don't have to spend a lot of money on travel expenses. And what medium does he work in for the sculpture? It's glass and metal, I would so call it's, it. It's called uh, dichondric uh, glass. It has Depending upon the, the way the light hits it, like this, it has multiple colors. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. and, and reflections. Then he puts, and then he puts it together in various shapes and things. And can we, can we talk about his uh, design idea? He wants to use punctuation for all of his designs. And so it would be fun. commas and... Very fun. Yeah. You guys work quickly on that. That's good. Well, we had to on the frit because the frit has to go in yeah. in the next two months. Yeah, he has yeah. to jump on that, and wow. then he'll work so. on the sculpture. He'll work on the frit first because of the Great. manufacturing. But yeah, we it, it was so so helpful to have the Clackamas County Arts Alliance. Yeah. Oh my gosh, 
and Elizabeth Klein has been attending all of our building committee meetings and she's just fabulous uh, just fabulous I mean it, she's a dream to work with so um, so this is where you would basically be coming up at the top of the stairs this is the view from the top of the stairs. And that's the atrium down below us? Yeah, that's the atrium down below us. Okay. And right along, see where those two beams are off to the left, there will be like, um, we call it a laptop bar, but there will be a bar height thing with stools there, kind of overlooking the atrium mm. there, and then on the other side to your right of the stair. And then that's just kind of the expanse of looking out towards <clears throat> the uh, Atkinson Church at the far end you know all the openings that's where basically will be mostly glass um, at the far end that'll be all teen the teen area and we're just with Joan and Haley the architects today working on signage and furniture and colors the color palette we uh, yeah we had some spirited conversations about the color palette. <laughs> the teen area is, I call it electric blue. Mm -hmm. It's this really bright blue and it's gonna be all blue. Um, so that it's very well designated as like, it's not, there's not a wall there, you know, so we have to have something to kind of separate the space. So it's gonna be different carpet, for instance, than like the internet area, which is what is closest to us here. And then that's just the same kind of the same view from the top of the stairs and directly in front of us well would be the laptop bar off onto the right but then all that other area will be the nonfiction area for the adults and then back where those beams are in the shade the shaded area back there that is where the two smaller conference rooms are going to be and um, you might be able to see the little wooden frames. Those are where windows are going to be okay. in those where, rooms. Where will the staff be located on the second floor? Is that yeah, you'll, I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. I have a particular picture for that. So this is this would be the nonfiction area, looking back towards Jefferson. I just kind of went all the way around. So those two windows, the one on the left is Linda's, and the one on the right is mine. So those are going to be two offices right there. And then that's looking towards 7th, and that's the fiction area, and then back towards the front. And you can get kind of that treehouse effect that we had talked about all that time mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. And that's back behind where the elevator is, comes up. You go in on one side, you come out on the other, and then that's just a different, you know, stand, I was standing in a different place. That's the conference room standing in a different place. And there's Vanna. Those are the offices. I'd like to buy an E. Yes. I'd like to buy an office, please. Mm -hmm. that. Oh, and I added, that's my lesson hey. in Brooklyn. Put some butter on it, so huh? On the second floor, you guys will have your spaces, but is there someone who the public will be interacting on a regular basis and also in terms of supervision of the conference rooms and the teen area of proximity. There's a service desk up there. Okay. Is that sort of by the laptop bar? Or? It's um, like basically as you walk up the stairs and you land there, it's kind of off to your right. Okay. It's um, at the beginning of the nonfiction area. Okay. Yeah, so it's like right across from the laptop bar. Okay. Yeah, there's um, service desks, one in children's, in the foyer and then one upstairs one upstairs and one in the Carnegie I know four desks so is that your very first brick ever? my very first brick uh -huh. there I am working on my very first brick hey <laughs> she did it <laughs> that's the end okay so that's that um, so so Good the thing. building is on time and on budget we are we are asking the city commission to approve a big change order in the amount of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars which actually raises the GMP which is the guaranteed maximum price most of that amount is um, comes from the difference of 
our estimate of prices when we started because we started with the 90 percent drawings and that's what we submitted for permitting the permitting process so that we could get going and then um, what came out of the permitting process and all the comments from public works took a very very long time and there was a lot of evolution of it over time and it involved a lot of changes and ended up costing us about $130,000, which, which was something that we actually accounted for in our budget. So we had put a lot of money into contingency to cover that unknown. Mm -hmm. And we have a, enough money in contingency that our project manager feels very comfortable that we can you know, accommodate that change, which we anticipated and still have plenty left over for anything else that might come up. How did the sewage sewer thing resolve itself? Well, it resolved itself. You may know that uh, since we last met, another tree came down. Um, what happened was that the storm sewer is what we're mostly talking about, the storm water, I'm sorry, um, had to go out into 7th Street. And this is really that caused just a lot of angst back and forth and changes. And the Public Works decided they didn't really like the path and things weren't going to fit together. And you can jump in anytime if I'm not explaining this well. And what happened was that they recommended another route. The route that we had wanted to go was a route where there already was a pathway through the trees that we knew existed. And we probably we thought it would at least impact the existing trees. But they recommended that we um, do a different route. Um, and so that route went right into a bunch of roots. And so that destabilized one of the trees very, very significantly. So it was like the day after I left on vacation or something, <laughs> all of a sudden there was this like explosion of emails and I didn't even really absorb it fully until all of a sudden I saw something that said, and they'll be there to take down the tree at seven o'clock in the morning. And Linda was there and mm -hmm. it came down really, really <laughs> very, very quickly. <laughs> and they chipped it on site. They didn't save it like they did the other trees because what we've discovered in saving trees is that it's very expensive to save trees. And we we're already over that budget area by $30,000 in saving the other trees that we saved. So we hope to use a bunch of the wood from the trees, Scott, in the, in the building. So we had elm and maple. The elm is usable for certain building things and then hopefully the maple will end up as art projects, basically. So um, so that came down really, really fast. Um, they only had to be out in the street in 7th one night to work on that, which was really good because night work is very expensive. Um, and then everything else they've done on 6th or on the car, on, in the park. And so that's gone pretty smoothly. They're pretty much wrapped up with that now. So, I think I had one day of, of detour type. Yeah, flagging. one one day the um, the front walkway was completely unavailable, which actually w meant that our courier had to detour his, their deliveries because they're using that front walkway. They like go up on that sidewalk and drive all the way. They back up to the steps, and it, so that allows them to do really really fast transfer of materials because they extend their thing out into you know the front on top. Yeah. It works really well. Otherwise, it is a long trek <laughs> with, you know, those crates. You, you lost your back driveway, so. Yep, yeah. completely lost the back driveway mm -hmm. long, long ago. So this was uh, one, they were thrilled that it was only one day that they couldn't use that. And so now that's open and um, they've done a really nice job of cleaning it back up and putting down those things to keep the mud from getting on the sidewalks too much. I think they've kept a really nice, clean site, mm -hmm. and we yeah, haven't but, really but, heard a lot of complaints at all. But I'm I'm very uh, pleased with the. Yeah. It's a it's a much, a much cleaner site than you might normally find. Yeah. I Good. think our other contractors that we interviewed would not have done the same. So I'm really very happy with that, because we we have received very few complaints about the construction. A couple about parking, and that's about it, really. Anything and about noise? Mm -mm. Excellent. Oh, well, wait, not lately. Yeah. But mostly it's 
because either people are getting really used to it or we like let them know ahead of time that it's going to be really loud. And most of that was in the beginning. I'm yeah. not sure it's going to. I, I, you have to appreciate that the diesel technology has come a long ways, and the job site today is, is much quieter than uh, the, the era of when I was growing up. I can only imagine. So it's, um, it's just a, it, it's also a, a technological advancement. So we probably should like move on because it's longer than we usually go. And we um, wanted to talk about the library strategic plan. So we don't have to have this on anymore though. There we go. Okay. Thanks, Renee. So I'm really glad that you um, mentioned the strategic plan, whoever w that was that did that. Um, so I could pull it out and kind of like review where we were on all these things. Mm -hmm. Because you know, the problem with strategic plans is you create them and then you throw it on a shelf and you never look at it again because you've done your job, right? So, I mean, I don't know if we wanna go through every single one of these things but starting on about page five I um, went through and I commented on um, where we were in each one of these areas and I don't know if you've all had a chance to read it or how you want to get Slightly. through this mm -hmm. I think it's the kind of thing, if it's, if it's important to us, that we probably should uh, really do our homework and then come mm -hmm. back at another meeting and mm -hmm. maybe spend uh, an hour mm -hmm. going through the wording because it's all about words. And uh, I, I looked through it. I, of course, I lived this in 2013 when we were going through it. Right. And I was saying, oh, it still reads pretty well. Uh, but I'm not very much of a futurist. I could think about how to how this these words sprinkle over the the concrete that's now being poured over there, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have a lot of good heads here, so maybe other ideas pop up. Yeah, I, I like the idea of trying to take some focus <coughs> time, you know, where we dedicate most of the meeting to mm -hmm. talk about it. Because um, I had some questions, not knowing like who created it, how did we share it, did we do annual implementation plans I mean you've done a lot but you know that's a, that yeah. is a problem with the strategic plans that get done and then they get set aside versus how that's driving the work you're doing so, do we want to table this for now then can I, can I make one more comment on yeah. that too so so my interest in it was in looking uh, to the future beyond this building mm -hmm. um, and, and this plan doesn't go too far out into mm -hmm. the future beyond the, mm -hmm. the building um, but uh, if you're reading it, uh, you know I'm I'm going to be a big advocate for getting some kind of branch um, activity happening, at least out in the more towards the suburbs, uh, and whether that's a a branch or a uh, a collaborative effort to do collections and and, and drop offs that kind of thing. Which which is is in the plan, and, and you'll see references to uh, to that. Uh, so as you read through it, 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 try to think about how we might serve the community uh, on the kind of you know we're yeah, we're, we're, in, we're in the urban area, and, and and how we need to serve the outlying communities. And I uh, uh, I just I want to spend a few minutes talking about that uh, because I think we're we're going to. We need to look farther ahead, and, and that's going to involve financial commitments if we if we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, um, I've always been very very interested in creating sites for um, more book drops, and I don't know how many or where, but out in the community so that people wouldn't have to come all the way in first of all, and deal with traffic and create traffic just to drop something off. You know, it would be it would make far more sense to send out one or two 
vehicles to pick that kind of stuff up than make all those individuals come in and deliver stuff if possible. And I've also talked about the idea of um, sharing space in an existing building mm -hmm. to create a part-time kind of drop off, pick up holds, place holds kind of thing that would just be really convenient for you know working people or after school kind of thing or something. So out somewhere at least as far as like 213 but maybe on 213 or something like that because I do do think that it's location-wise we are very very as far east as we can go practically in our service area and so you know we owe it to our, the rest of our service area to think of ways that we can deliver service elsewhere like a library kiosk up at the Berry Hill yeah I mean there's all kinds of ideas yeah you, you all remember the the uh, post office at Danielson's mm -hmm. oh yeah packed all the time yeah. people using that as mm -hmm. opposed to going to the post office I think something, ideas like that, like that are that. great something yeah. like that yeah or um, I'm curious about the demographics one mm -hmm. the fact that the medium family income is almost eight thousand dollars less two years later I know i that really intrigues me yeah um, also that what that means in terms of really you know the services that we provide I'm also curious why we haven't broken it down by ethnicity and or language, in terms of the services, in terms yeah, of bilingual. The, the, um, there's not that many. I mean, you know, according to the official demographics, it's a okay. pretty low percentage. Okay. Yeah. Of even like bilingual families mm -hmm. or Spanish speaking. Well, yeah, and it's really hard to or get Russian. good statistics on bilingual. Just you know, okay. yeah, and Russians are not necessarily in our service area. Okay. Yeah. Because usually you just see that mm -hmm. somehow, even if mm -hmm. it is reflects 99.9% mm -hmm. Caucasian. Well, I mean, I could know. certainly reflect it, yeah. Yeah, no, but I'm just, and then um, as we look at expanding, just sort of looking at where the population. Well, that's just it. You don't want to just, you know, you have to find a place that makes sense. Yeah. Where people will actually, either they travel by really regularly, mm -hmm. or there's a lot of people there or something, right? And then, you know, but once you find a location, that doesn't mean that location is going to work. Stay. I mean, because you have to like, can I rent a space here? Can I put in a Dropbox here? Can I do a drive-through here, which would be fantastic to be offered to offer to people, right? So lots of little interesting things to think about with yeah. that project. And it's it's funny because you know this building has just been like the driving force behind so much stuff. But someday it will be done. And guess what? It also won't be perfect. Yeah. You know, I want to kind of like get you ready for the fact that it won't be perfect <clears throat> emotionally. Like it won't be perfect. Yeah. Because until it's done, right? Until it's done, it's perfect. Because it's all up here. It, right? Yeah. It's not going to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, seriously, this is like, you know, something that we're going to have to learn to deal with as staff and how we communicate to people like, yeah, I'm sorry, the community room's not bigger. Get over it. I mean, you know, you have to like think it's of like good, marriage or good ways to, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> well, it's not what I thought it was going to be. I know, right? So I'm, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about that. But there are a lot of things that we can move on to um, fulfill the last five years of my, you know, working life as a prof like professional librarian. There are lots of projects that would be really good for this community. So I, I love hear, that idea. What I hear is an interest that as we look at this to think really for year five, six, seven, out a few more years. Like I think, as you said, Don, was this the best language and now we're at a different point. So yeah. do we need to update the language? And maybe even in terms of the statistics, where, sure. we somebody's got planning statistics about where we're going to be in five years as Oregon City. I mean, they're doing all that planning, so do we look at some of that in addition to who we are now, but who do we think we're going to be in five mm -hmm. years? Because mm -hmm. we're planning for that. Right. That makes a lot of sense. That'd be good. Yeah. Well, and as far as like being inclusive on a process like this, you can expand it to be as big as you want or you can kind of not you know you, there are different ways you can get through a strategic planning process it, it can seems be like really having a right robust discussion here and then sort of figure out okay now maybe mm -hmm. it is time to take it somewhere else mm -hmm.
That sounds good. So shall we keep it on the agenda as kind of like one of those ongoing yeah. topics? So do we want to spend an hour next time and, and just plan on going to 7 o'clock and spend half or more of the meeting talking so about So we'll have it. to be out of here well before 7 because oh, another see. meeting starts at 7 here. I see. But we could certainly go to 6.30 or something, especially if we, but we could definitely do that. But I might need to like spend some time getting more stuff together. I don't know what inform you know there might be information that would be helpful to have for this conversation. We'll throw it at us. We'll see what sticks. How's that? Okay. Well, so I'm building a building. I don't know how much time I'll be able to devote to really this this month. I'll do do my best. So I, you 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 suck it up for us all the time. I know I do. I suck it up for you all the time, Don. Thanks for remembering. I don't that. even know if we need anything new yeah, for I don't this think, for the yeah. discussion. No, okay. I don't think well, that's so. what I'm wondering. I don't, no. I don't think we. I don't think we need information now. I think no. it'll be more for us to figure out. So what do we want to know, or what do we need to know, so we can be more yeah. planful. Mm -hmm. So I think it's for me. It's kind of a first first talk yeah. about it and go. Oh, okay, we really ought to think about this or that, and then. Yeah, we go from there. So we're just starting the review of strategic plan, not okay. finishing. So even like what questions do we need to ask ourselves? Yeah. Okay. Well, I will tell you that I'm prepared to give you a very brief financial look at what costs might be associated with doing a things branch? out in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like a branch? Right. <clears throat> Have you looked at staff costs? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. I, That's the I, I only like cost that really bothers me. I know. You know? Yeah. I know. Which yeah. It doesn't just bother me. It it's, just panics the you know what out of me. That's right. Yeah. Because you can't just have one person. You need to have two. Well, so no, it not necessarily. It depends. Really? If like, say for instance, it's a counter in another business where there's other people. where there's other people, yeah. then you could just have one staff person and you could mm -hmm. have it open. Um, I think it'd be really interesting to try some things that are just part time. Like, what are the most, you know, like let's say three to seven or something when everybody is out of school and going home from work. W would that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, would that like really serve a certain population in a certain, if you put it in a certain place? That so, would be my so question. I, I'll try to talk about that okay. next time. Okay. About where some of those costs are, because that's going to drive our thinking. Right. Um, Unless somebody dumps a million bucks in our pocket, you know. Okay, everybody's going to buy a Powerwall ticket, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah, do, and like devote a bunch of the money to the library. When's the drive? When is it? Uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Okay. Already have it planned. I'll have a branch <laughs> on my tropical <laughs> island that I will be at. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you laugh. You laugh about the million dollar thing. I, yes. I always check by local, my old local uh, newspaper back in Omaha. And somebody just dropped a million bucks on that foundation there, well, just out of the blue, bang. Yeah, you know, and everybody's going, "Oh my God!" Yeah, it's it, you know, when when I win the lottery, you know, th this project's paid for. Your branch thing will be paid for. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's so generous. Can you get your wife to yeah. approve that? Yeah, she already approved. All it. right, because yeah. she's already got her projects that we're paying for too. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> Of their pet projects. Okay. Well, I think this would be a great conversation. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll we'll table that for now. We'll come back, load it for bear next time. Okay. Any few other future agendas besides strategic uh, plan? Buy a lottery ticket. Definitely buy a lottery ticket. All right. What about the policies with the the meeting room or the community rooms? Let me get some stuff together for you on that. I've had staff already do some um, research on that. So I'll try to get something for you to like look at. Because that's kind of easier then. <coughs> but yeah, we need to think about that for sure. Good point. Yeah, I know I've been fretting over that one too. <laughs> yes, thanks God. Thanks God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we also need to look at our behavior policies? Well, we already did. I know. But and I mean, I've updated now, them. But now we got two floors and a lot more opportunity for people to do strange things so well but it's just more of the same strange things okay then. i mean <laughs> it's I think, so strange you can go <laughs> yeah <laughs> think we're okay the, the reason i'd want to change a behavior policy is to make it more um kind of like user friendly i guess or understandable or something but i'm just not sure 
I'm not really sure what helps staff, and that's really what I'm talking about mm -hmm. at this point. So we'll, let's table that, but keep okay. it in mind. Yeah. Anything else? All right, then we will call adjournment to this meeting at 6.04.